the Declaration of, Con of Independence. We hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We believe in, we fight for our unalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We believe that all humans are equal. Why? Why do we believe that? Because we were created equal by our Creator. Because we believe that. If a person believed that there is no Creator, there is no God, that we weren't created but existed by chance, that we live in a system where only the strongest and the fittest survive, then they must realize that they actually don't have any ultimate basis to claim equality. It cannot exist. That, they, that no one should be claiming or demanding their rights. But people claim it. People demand it all the time. It's like it's built into us. It's like we were created it with it. We were born with it. People not only want their rights, they want to be in the right and not in the wrong. They want people to acknowledge that, hey, you are living a right lifestyle. You are doing right things. They want acknowledgement from other people that they are right. Well, if these are atheists who doesn't believe that such thing as right and wrong really exist in the first place, why would they want something to be right at all if no such thing ever existed? If they do believe in ultimate right and wrong, where did this standard come from? If the ultimate standard is from the Bible, why do they not follow the standard that's specified in it? You know, many people claim that they have rights and want to be heard because they say life has worth, that their life has worth, that human beings are worthy. But why? Who gave you your worth? If you don't believe in the God who created you with these unalienable rights, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that there is any right and wrong, there is any morality, well, why do you want to change how people look at morality? Why do you want to change its standards? Now, let me tell you about true equality. Not some idea of equality that we came up with on our own, but absolute equality that is established by one true God. The Almighty God who created us who does not show favoritism as we read in the scripture today, or as we praise today, who doesn't care about the color of our skin, who loves us just the way we are. First of all, we are all equal because we were created equal in the image of God, Imago Dei. Genesis, we all know this. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over everything creeping there that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We are equal because that's how God created us. That's why Christians stand for equality. Secondly, we are equal because none of us is better than anyone else. 
None of us are more righteous than anyone else because we are all sinners and we are all under God's judgment. Romans chapter 3 says this, For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Number one, we were created equal. Number two, we were equal because we all sin. We all deserve judgment. Thirdly, we are all equal because we have been equally redeemed by God. Son of God, equally died for each and every one of us. Jesus shed his blood to redeem everyone equally. Hebrews says this, chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus suffered that so that by the grace of God, he may taste death for everyone. 1 John 2, 2 says this, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not, not only for ours, but also for the sins of of the whole world, created equal, sinned equally, redeemed equally. Romans chapter 5, 18, Therefore, as some trespasses led to condemnation of all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. Not only did God create us equally, redeemed us equally, but he tells us to treat others equally, to love each other equally, to love all. That's the absolute equality. That's the true equality. That's why we must be equal. It's not our idea. It was established by our creator, the almighty God. As we close, I want to ask you guys something. What should be our attitude towards LGBT movement and people who are LGBT? As a Christian, I live my life. We view life through the corrective lens of God, as God tells us in the Bible, right? It's not our ideas. It's what God tells us. The Bible tells us that everyone is equal, and we say, yes, Lord. The Bible tells us homosexuality is a sin, and we say, yes, Lord. But the Bible does not only identify homosexuality as sin, does it? 1 Corinthians 6 says this, Or do you not know that the unrighteousness the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. For such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Some sin by practicing homosexuality, yes. But some sin by being sexually immoral. Some sin by being greedy, by being self-righteous, by having pride. And no matter what kind of sin that you do, verse 11 tells us that, and such were some of you. All of you were some of these things. We are all sinners. Ephesians 2 says this, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. All of mankind. We all sin. We, are, we all have this face. We all have this disease. The first thing that we must understand is not to look outside, but to look within our hearts and know that we are all sinners. Whether you're homosexual or you're heterosexual, it doesn't matter. We are all sinners. Christians are not better people. 
They're just forgiven people who have accepted the atonement of Jesus Christ. It gives us no right to look at somebody else and say, hey, they're unworthy of us. They're less than us. They're only three-fifths human. No. We are all alike. It's just that we are forgiven. Second thing that we must understand is that we should not tell people who are not Christians to live the Christian life. I see this all the time. People trying to tell whether it's homosexuals or person who's living in an atheist life to live like the Bible tells you to live. You're not Christian? I don't care. Live the Christian life. This is unbiblical. This is wrong. Not only do they not agree with our way of life, even if they wanted to, they wouldn't be able to live the life you're telling them to live. They cannot live as a Christian. You have to understand that no one can live the Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit, right? If we could live the life without the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ died for nothing. None of us could live this life without the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is only with you when you love God and you walk with God. And to tell the people who don't love God and do not walk with God to live the life that you live, it's not biblical. The third thing that we must understand is that we must love people who do not disagree with, who do not agree with us. We must show sympathy for those people who do not know Christ yet and are misled by the lies and living a life away from God, or rather, dying a life without our Lord towards eternal judgment. Instead of having a judgmental hating eye, right? We need to have eye of sympathy. We must have compassion for these people who are deceived, confused, lonely, and are suffering. They're screaming out for help. If some kind of a movement is, is going to give them recognition, well, they're going to join the movement. We have to provide love. We must have compassion to give them the good news which they may not have heard correctly all this time. We have to give them the gospel. We have to give them Jesus Christ. Listen, racism is nothing more than sin nature at a corporate level or group level. Individually, we think we're better than somebody else. That's sin nature. We're, pri we're proud. We, we want us to be the main character in any life situation. I think about myself. Racism is just a group, corporate level of that same sin nature. The primary reason that, that Jesus, the primary mission that Jesus gave us is not to judge sinners, but to save them, right? Jesus did not go up to heaven and say, you shall judge other sinners. No. He said, you shall proclaim my good news. You should save them. The primary co commandment that Jesus gave was not to hate the sinners, but to love God and love others. But we must also not compromise the truth in the name of tolerance, in the name of love. Even though we love our LGBT brothers and sisters, we cannot just agree and say that homosexuality is right. Remember, for Christians, anything that is not theologically correct cannot be politically correct. Understand? You cannot just overrule God and say, okay, I think it's okay. We must concentrate our efforts in not arguing about whether homosexuality is right and wrong and, and pointing fingers. No. We must concentrate our efforts, again, in giving the good news. <laughs> So that when they come to the truth, we don't have to argue with them. The Holy Spirit will, conduct, will, will convict them. It's not our job. God will do his job. We just have to do ours. 
We just have to love, and we just have to give the good news. Against us, Lord. 